firstly, Michael, welcome back to the Coventry Building Society Arena. How's it feel being back here, somewhere where you, where you had so many fond memories? Well, it feels great, you know, it's, uh, I, I can't believe I'm back. Um, it feels like home, you know, um, it's nice to be at the stadium again and I'm so grateful I'm invited here as a match day guest. Um, yeah, it feels great. It's been 16 years since you were here. When we announced that you were going to be here, there was such a nice reaction on social media. You're still such a popular figure here, which must feel so nice. Yeah, you know, I'm delighted, you know, it's, it's, it's very nice. Um, I've always loved the, the fans here, the people around the club. Um, I've, been, I've always been respected and well taken care of, you know, and it's, it just feels great. Tell us a little bit about the transfer to move to Coventry. As I said, it's been 16 years. Was it always your dream to play in England? Yeah, it was always my dream to, to play in the Premiership here in England um, uh, since I was very young. Um, at the time, I used to play in Norway um, with Lillestrom. And uh, here in Coventry, Mickey Adams was the manager. And they came all the way to Norway to meet me and see me play. And uh, he saw me play and we had a good chat after the game. And uh, yeah, I made my move here to Coventry. Yeah, well, I know a lot of our fans would have looked at their, your goals on uh, YouTube, which is at an internet site over here, and, and they've seen that you score quite a few spectacular goals. Would you say that that's your best quality? Well, you know, um, I like scoring goals and I like to shoot from outside the box as well. I like to create things, um, but I like, to, I like to give my team and stuff. Good, good opportunities to score as well. So. It was pretty hard, you know, especially coming to English football is completely different from any other league, you know, it's fast, it's physical and, um, uh, but I fitted in pretty quick, um, as I said, I, was, I had a nice warm welcome, um, all my teammates, um, they made me feel at home, um, I clicked immediately with nearly everybody, you know, um, also the people behind the scenes, like the kit manager, the physios, the chef, you know, um, they made me feel at home and that's, that's, that helped a lot and it's, I'm very grateful for that. Um, but yes, um, I pretty much entered the team really quick and got used to the game and yeah, with the help of my friends, I managed to, to do it. Mm -hmm. And then you had the summer that followed and then the season after that is where you really hit the ground running. I think you scored 18 goals in the first half of that season. Yeah. So what was it that changed over that summer and how good did it feel for you to finally prove yourself here in England that you could score goals at this level? Well, you know, um, uh, at that, that, uh, in that summer I, I went back home and I kept on training and I wanted to start the season with a bang, you know. Um, and you know, when you, when you work hard, um, it pays off, you know, as they say. And yes, I started the season very, very well. Um, and yes, it's always good to score goals, you know, um, and prove yourself that you can, you can really do it. Um, so it felt really, really good. There's Best again. Jay Tab running ahead of him, so is Misford. Here's Doyle with the effort, Misford follows it in. And Coventry have the opening goal. The Carling Cup goes flat for United. Everyone except Leon Best back for Coventry. Nani, and towards Dorn! Oh, what an effort and what a save from Andy Marshall. And he's gone from one end to the other. Here goes Misford again. Referee plays the advantage, it's four on two here. Tab to Misford! It's his and Coventry second. And from one end of the pitch to the other, Coventry City go two up and are so close now to causing a real shock in this Carling Cup. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when, when we got to know we're, playing, we're going to play Man U, um, of course everybody was uh, on the moon, you know, everybody was happy. Um, I was over the moon, I was, you know, playing in Old Trafford, it's it's biggest stadium ever. Um, 75,000 people, you know, playing Man U. So I think since the day I got to know, I got prepared mentally, you know, for that game. Um, <laughs> Um, of course, I prayed a lot, you know, um, going towards the game um, for me to and for the club to have a good game. Um, and as I said, I prepared myself mentally and physically where I'm really good. Uh, so did my friends. Um, and yes, and we managed to get a good result. There was a lot of confidence going into that game because I think not a lot of people remember that the week building up to that game, we actually lost 4-1 against Ipswich and we weren't on the best run. 
But the way that we started that game and played in that game, we played with so much confidence. It was like the team really believed they were going to get a result that night. I mean, yeah, I mean, the squad was really like united, you know, um, everybody wanted to do well, um, everyone wanted to win the game and we worked so hard for each other and and yes, um, we prepared ourselves really, really well. Um, and, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, if it's Manu, if it's some other team, it's 11 against 11, you know, and we believed in that and the manager made us believe that we can do it as well. And uh, yeah, we, we managed to do it. Are the goals still vivid in your memory? Because the first one was a true poacher's finish at the back post and then the next one you had to go up against Gerard Piquet down that left-hand side and then move inside. Are they still vivid in your head, those goals? Yes, of course. I mean, uh, I remember this this uh, this very clearly. Before the first goal, there was another cross similar to the to the first goal, which I, I didn't reach for it. And I remember back in the days when I was at Kaiserslautern, Miroslav Klovice told me, oh, in... in actions like that just throw yourself at, at goal you know and then just after that the same ball came in and that's what I did and I scored and uh, and the second one yeah the second was also a nice goal I mean it was a long a good long ball from Doyle and yeah took off PK and managed to score and it could have been a hat-trick too couldn't it because yeah. you had that cross that you flicked in the first half that just flicked off the back post as well Simpson still has it Misford's in the centre oh and that was almost a very cheeky second yeah, yeah, I was unlucky there, but you know, um, I'm so happy, you know, and delighted with, with with what happened that night, and it was good for me personally and for the team, and especially for the club, you know, and especially for the supporters, you know, they were all so happy, and it's 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 an amazing feeling. What were the celebrations like in the dressing room after that one? Well, you know, everybody was over the moon, you know, everybody was happy, you know. I mean, my phone never stopped, you know, and I had all Malta behind me watching me, you know, and. Uh, uh, it was something amazing, but you know, three three days after that, we were, we were playing at home, so we couldn't really celebrate that much, of course. It's a bit different now. Yeah, it's changed. <laughs> Same layout, though. That was my spot over there. Come on, eh? Just memories, man. I remember next to me there was an Eddie Wood, yeah? And he had did, everybody has his own thing of preparing himself, yeah? And he used to put his boots here, put the lace really tight, nice and tidy, you know? And he used to just wake up and just hit it for him, you know? Good. I always put my left boot and then my right, my right boot after that and taking them off the same thing, the same way. You played with some great players at Coventry. You mentioned Michael Doyle there and Jay Tab as well. He got the assist for the second goal. Do you look back at that Coventry team and think that's a team that should have really been up the top end of that division, really challenging for the Premier League? Because there were some great players in that team. Well, yes, I mean, Stephen Hughes. We had, we had a, lot of, a lot of very, very good players, very talented players, experienced players, you know, and also young players. Um, but, you know, football is, uh, that's why it's such a nice game, you know, I mean, sometimes you can have the best players in the world and you, you don't win nothing, you know, and sometimes you have just, you know, uh, hungry players and you, you win titles. But yes, I remember we had a great atmosphere in the team and we had great talent in the team and, yeah, I mean, it's a pity we didn't really do it, but um, I'm very happy that the two and a half years, three years I did here, it was, it was an experience I'll, I'll never forget. After leaving Coventry, you went on to achieve so many more great things, especially for Malta. When you look back on your career now as a retired player, how proud are you of everything you achieved? Well, you know, I'm, uh, I'm very happy, you know, with, with everything I, I, I did. But, um, you know, I'm really, really happy most of all is like things like today that after all these years, I'm still respected so much and I'm invited here and from the club. And these are, these are things that are more important for me as a, as a human being. Is it good as well to come back here on a day like today and see the Sky Blues under Mark Robbins back in the championship, back challenging for that, that Premier League that they're chasing? Is it good to come back and see the club back in a really good place after what were some really bad years after you left? Oh, yes. I mean, um, that's where this club deserves to be. Um, they, we were unlucky they didn't make it to the Premiership, um, but yes, of course, that's football. Um, but yes, I mean, it's a club like this deserves to be up there all the time.